Hey friends, we are going to be starting a new book tonight. The book is called Chasing Helicity. It's by Ginger Z. She is the ABC News Chief Meteorologist for Good Morning America. I've heard some pretty great things about this book. This is the first book in her series of three. Um, I'm not 100% sure if there is an AR test on this book, but we can find that out and I'll let you know um, at the end. All right, are you ready? All right, let's read Chasing Felicity. Maybe if I can get the pages turned. Oh my goodness. All right. She had to escape the loud music, the louder neighbors, the grilled burgers that were harder than hockey pucks and about as flavorful, the red, white, and blue paper goods, the late afternoon wind kept tossing to the ground. She couldn't take it any longer. Memorial Day in West Michigan was more all-American and annoying the older and more senile she got. Felicity caught her mother's eye and gave her a pleading look. Her mother's lips twitched in either a smile or a grimace, but she nodded her permission for Felicity to leave. Felicity snaked her way across the backyard towards the kitchen. Snatches of conversation reached her ears. Got to been a proud day for you when the Michigan State officer came, she heard Mr. Robinson say to a father. A football scholarship is nothing to sneeze at. His congratulations were edged with envy. Her father, a large muscular man with sandy hair turning to gray, gave a slow grin. It does make paying for college a little easier to manage, he acknowledged. Felicity paused at the kitchen door and glanced out at her brother. A six foot four, at six foot four, Andy was easy to spot despite the admirers surrounding him. He was a good looking guy. Thick wavy brown hair, green eyes, and high cheekbones. Features similar to her own, but it was his ability to thread a football between defenders and into the hands of the receiver that made him so popular. Thanks to his throwing arm, his high school football team had posted back-to-back -back undefeated seasons and finished with the top ranking in the state. In their small town, that made him a hero. Andy saw Felicity looking. He flashed his crooked smile and raised his can of soda. Two girls turned to see who had captured his attention. It was his it's his little sister, Felicity, one said. They turned back, dismissing her without another thought. Felicity, Andy corrected. What? The girl asked, looking confused. My sister's name is Felicity. Felicity? The girl gave her friend a look. What kind of name is that? Her friend giggled. It was a fair question. The answer was sweet and a little nerdy, just like Felicity. Felicity's grandmother had liked the sound and meaning of it. A brilliant woman, Grandma Picasso, had studied physics before marrying. Felicity was her favorite physics term. It basically meant to spin in a, in a helicity or corkscrew motion. Felicity, the word, was an integral part of her thesis and doctoral work. A, de a decorated physicist, she died just before Felicity was born. Felicity's mother insisted on choosing a name that honored her memory. While it was a little strange, Felicity considered herself lucky. The alternative was Doris. Leaving Andy to his posse, Felicity opened the kitchen door and almost ran into Mrs. Van Hooten, who was coming out with a platter of watermelon slices. Sorry, she ducked in and let her neighbor pass. As she did, her elbow hit the stack of mail on the counter and knocked it to the floor. Careful, dear, said Mrs. Van Hooten. Felicity apologized again, but Mrs. Van Hooten was already closing the door behind her. With a sigh, Felicity picked up the mail. Amid the flyers, catalogs, and bills were letters from her middle school. It was addressed to her parents, but since it was open, she decided it was fair game. She slid the letter out and scanned the contents. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Dunlap, congratulations, your daughter will be starting high school next fall. Our guidance office is pleased to inform you of their recommendations for the placement in the science and math classes. College prep, or CP classes offer instruction at a moderate pace, while the more challenging honors, or H classes, move at more move more briskly through the curriculum. The, rec the recommendations below are based on careful evaluation of your student's middle school performance in both subjects. Felicity had been waiting all week to learn if she'd been placed in the higher level honors classes. Like her grandmother, she was drawn to science and math. Unfortunately, those subjects were not always easy for her. She was pretty sure which level she'd be recommended for. Still, her heart fell when she saw the CP boxes checked for both categories. A thud on the door startled, startled her. Miss Van Hooten was there standing under the weight of a whole watermelon. Felicity let her in. Thank you, sweetie. Miss Van Hooten deposited the watermelon on the counter with a sigh of relief. Want to help me cut this up? Felicity murmured an excuse and hurried from the kitchen. She had to get away to go to one place where she could be alone and think. 
her bedroom, she changed out of her shorts and t-shirt into her riding clothes, boots, jeans, and a lightweight long-sleeved shirt. She jammed the letter into one pocket and her smartphone in another, quickly weaved her long, bra black, long brown hair into a thick braid down her back, and then sneaked downstairs and outside the door. She ran to the barn in the far corner of the field behind her house. Her horse, a black blue a blue-black gelding named Raven, nickered a welcome. Twenty minutes later, Helicity and Raven were galloping toward a distant hill. Western Michigan was relatively flat, so the hill provided a good view of the area. A well-worn path wound up the side. Raven didn't need direction. He covered the ground many times before. When they reached a rocky overlook at the top, they stopped. Helicity dismounted and let Raven wander to a nearby patch of grass while she took a seat on the boulder. She could see a full 360 degrees because there were so few trees on the hilltop. Her town and others nearby spread all around her in all directions. A cross hatching of dirt and paved roads dotted with a golf course, schools, sprawling mall, churches, and farms. Subdivisions radiated out from the town's center in ever winding circles, like ripples in a pond, slowly encroaching on the outlying farmland. On the western horizon, the lowering sun lit up the billowing cloud bank with shades of red and orange. Felicity picked out the hospital where she and her brother had been born. Other than summer trips to Lake Michigan and a fall weekend here and there in East Lassing to see a Michigan State football game, they'd rarely left their town since. Andy is getting out soon though, Felicity thought. In a month, he'll start training with the university football team, traveling to games all over the country. I'll be home alone with mom and dad. She wasn't sure that was gonna go well. She pulled the school's letter out of her pocket. Mom hasn't shown this to Dad yet, she realized. She knew if he had seen it, he would have made some disappointing comment about her not reaching her full potential, and among other remarks. She smoothed the creases on the paper. As she did, a paragraph she missed in the first reading jumped out at her. You can opt to overrule these recommendations and place your child in a higher level, but please be advised that doing so may result in lower academic achievement. She hadn't realized that she, had, she and her parents had a say in the matter. Going with the end of her brain, she played out different scenarios in her head. If I bump up to honors, I might not be in a class with my friends. Worse, I might crash and burn. Dad have, would have plenty to say about that. Maybe it would be better just to stay in CP. But CP level classes might not let me get on track for... A flash of lightning jolted from her thoughts. Thunder rumbled seconds later. A sudden wind bent the branches of the nearby tree and teased loose strands of her hair. Raven tossed his head, jangling his bri bridle. Felicity moved to soothe him. It's okay, boy, she murmured. It's just a little rain, a little thunder. She stoked Raven's glossy neck, glancing back at the storm as she did. What she saw made her pause. For as long as she could remember, Felicity had been fascinated by the weather. Her favorite television program was whatever was on the weather channel. Her heroes were meteorologists and storm chasers. She couldn't tell you how much about the conflicts in the Middle East or the starlet on the cover of the People magazine, but if you needed a detailed five-day forecast, you asked Helicity. Western Michigan got its fair share of wild weather. Lake effect snow from Lake Michigan, drenching rain, ice storms and heat waves, and the occasional twister. She had seen plenty of opportunities to observe storms up close and personal, but what she saw on the horizon was unlike anything she'd ever witnessed. She took out her phone, tapped a video, and zoomed in on the gathering storm. I'll tell you what, Raven, I'm glad we're seeing this from up here because I think anyone near that, she hit record, is about to get walloped. Chapter two. The humidity heavy during her ride up the hill was only a little better in the higher elevation with a strong breeze. That breeze started feeling more like a jet engine screaming at her back and heading straight into that thunderstorm. She realized she was now feeling a strong inflow something she'd only read about. Holding her phone with one hand, Helicity plucked out her sweat-soaked shirt with the other. A zigzag of lightning lit up the tower, towering clouds. It was a split second of incredible natural beauty. She almost crowed with delight, knowing that she'd caught that moment on her phone. A gust of wind freed more hair from her brain. She brushed it off her face with an impatient sweep, but the wind just blew it right back. She ignored it switched her camera from video to photo and snapped some stills. Several clicks later, Helicity glanced at the corner of the screen and groaned. Her battery life bar was on the on red, meaning it was less than 10%. The last thing she needed was for it to die completely. If her dad tried to call, he couldn't get through. She'd never hear the end of it. 
Why am I spending my money on that thing? He re would reprimand her the last time he, her battery ran out. If you don't bother to keep it up and running. I just forgot to charge it, that's all, she mumbled. It won't happen again. He snorted, that's what you said the last time. Maybe if you spent less time with your head in the clouds. He'd throw his hands up in disgust and walk away, leaving Holicity with her head bowed and her face burning. I don't know why I'm worried about him calling me, she thought now as she took a few more pictures of the changing clouds. He probably doesn't even have his phone on him. Unlike most people nowadays, her father detached from his phone the minute he walked through the front door. A general contractor, he built new houses and renovated older ones. He was, he was charming and agreeable with his clients during work hours, but when he was at home and off the clock, he refused to see, receive or return their calls. I only have one darn, I only have the darn thing because of work, he told Felicity's mother when she questioned that practice. When I'm here, I'm not working, am I? Yeah, no hypocrisy there, Felicity thought sarcastically. I'm supposed to be available all the time to him, but him? Only when he chooses to be. She sat on the boulder and drew her knees up to her chest. Ignoring the increasingly low battery, she thumbed through the photos she had just taken. Even on the tiny screen, the images of the clouds and gathering storm made her heart beat a little faster. She'd given up trying to understand why she reacted this way. Fascination with the weather was part of her. Couldn't change it. Didn't want to. But she learned to not bring up her interest at home. Her father had made it perfectly clear that the, that the topic bored him. For goodness sake, the weather? That's all she can think about and talk about at dinner. She'd heard him scoff at her mother recently. Thunder boomed again, closer this time, and louder. Raven gave a sort of Raven gave a snort of alarm. Helicity slid off the rock and moved to the horse's side. Okay, boy, I hear you. We'll get going in just a few. Her voice trailed off as she glanced down at the land below. She blinked rapidly, trying to process what she was seeing. Moments ago the storm had looked threatening. Now it looked wrong. The clouds, once a billowing tower of white and gray puffs, had morphed into the overwhelming structure. The dark base of the storm sagging near the ground by, by the minute. Out of that base, a disc-like wall bulging even closer to the ground. It almost looked like an alien invasion from one of those Independence Day movies. That disc started spinning. The brilliant oranges and sunset reds slowly darkened to pitch black. No, not all black, Felicity amend, amended uneasily. She took her phone out and began videoing. There's green there too, and it's just not raining, it's pouring behind that storm. Suddenly, something clicked in her mind. The wall, the cloud, the rain, the wind, the greenish color, they all added up to a very frightening possibility. Raven, I think we'd better... Wah, wah, wah. Her phone suddenly blared. Star startled, she dropped it and it landed face up, showing the message that had popped up on the screen. Emergency alert. And below it appeared two words that confirmed her fears. Tornado warning. She snatched up the phone and scanned the rest of the message. Her mouth turned dry when she saw the town listed in the heart of the danger zone. Her phone buzzed. A text from Andy appeared. Where are you? She quickly typed. With Raven, I'm... She was just about to type safe when the screen went black. What? No, 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 no. Felicity clicked the side of the power button frantically. Nothing. She stabbed the... She stabbed and swept the screen with her finger, but it was no use. The battery was dead, the text unsent. She swore and she shoved the useless device in her back pocket. Come on, Raven, we're out of here. She swung herself up on the saddle and looked up at the storm. The ground blew, the spinning disc of the clown cloud was now whirling too. Slow at first, the spin gained momentum. Helicity, she whispered, that's what Helicity looks like. The whirling motion in the cloud and on the ground magically came together and suddenly it was as clear as any book in the movie or movie or YouTube video. That was a tornado. Then at first the quick tornado quickly blew with width. Felicity didn't want to see or didn't wait to see more. She wheeled Raven about and they set off down the path. A forbidding darkness gathered around them. The wind blasted them as they descended, swirling swirling up dusty leaf riddled debris from the ground and throwing it in their faces. Felicity squeezed her eyes to slits and ducked just into a, just in time to avoid a low hanging branch. But she couldn't avoid the hail that suddenly battered them as they round as they rounded the first corner of the twisted switchback trail. The hail started small about the size of a pea and and stuck in her hair and on her clothes. As they rode, the hail grew, now falling in golf ball size and then as big as a baseball. One smacked her 
in the arm and it stung. Ow! She shrieked. She pulled back on the reins, forcing Raven to slow his pace. As, she, as sure-footed as the horse was, she couldn't risk him stumbling. You can do it, boy, she murmured desperately, more for her own benefit than his, for there was no way the horse could hear over the wind and the hail. She reached forward with one hand and pat his neck. At that moment, there was a loud crack. A violent gust had snapped a nearby tree in half. The top crashed to the ground directly in Raven's path. With a sharp whinny, the horse reared. Holistity lost her one-handed grip on the reins and flew back out of the saddle. She landed hard. Pain shot up in her spine, making her gasp. Raven took off in a pa panicked gallop. No, stop! The wind snatched her weak cry from her lips. Grimacing, she got to her knees and then to her feet. Every moment brought stabs of pain, but she knew she couldn't stay where she was. Too late, she realized it had been a grave mistake to try and outrace the storm. If I'm caught here and the tornado hits, un unbidden and unwelcome terrifying images of flying branches and uprooted trees assaulted her mind. Her body would be pummeled. She choked back a sob and started running. She didn't head down the path. She knew tornadoes could strike hillsides as well as level ground but right now the nearby open space on the hilltop was indefinitely safer than the heavily forested trail hemming her uh, hemming her in and if that and if i can't make it home then i want to be there arms protected her face she she struggled up the trail she rounded a bend at the end of the hill and stopped with a short gasp below the tornado had grown even bigger and stronger and much more ferocious it tore through an in an isolated grove of trees, ripping them up at the roots and hurling them skyward, skyward in pieces. A nearby outbuilding blew apart like a house of cards. The debris floated almost magically and it swirled in the motion of the storm. Staying as far away from the trees as she could, she ran to the boulder and threw herself face down on the ground next to it, hoping it would offer some protection. She drew in her knees, covered her head with her hands and squeezed her eyes shut. Hell pelted her back, roaring wind whipped her whipped at her clothes and howled in her ears. Please, she whispered into the dirt, let me be all right. Let everyone be all right. Please, please, please. This time, her time seemed to halt as she repeated her mantra over and over. Let me be all right. Let me be all right. Let me be all right. Let everyone be all right. Suddenly, something changed. The hill turned to heavy rain, and then if someone switched off a faucet, the rain lessened to a drizzle before abruptly stopping altogether. The wind quieted and the air stilled. She opened her eyes. The light, the light brightened marginally. After a moment, she turned into her, turned her under her back and stared at the sky. Gray clouds gave way to wisps of white and then pale blue. It's, it's over. When it seemed, she sat up. Her tailbone and back felt bruised. Her shoulders tight and knotted with tension. She rolled them a few times, te testing them for pain, but they were fine. Grit coated her skin, clothes and hair, and filled her nostrils. She was drenched, but she licked her lips and she could still taste dust. But I'm okay, her voice cracked. She cleared her throat and swallowed hard. I'm okay, she repeated stronger this time. She stood on wobbly legs, staggered to the boulder and climbed up. Then she flung her arms wide because she could and because it was true. She yelled at the top of her lungs, I'm okay. And then she, and then did she, only then did she see what had happened to the towns below. All right, that's it for today. Um, Helicity's, Helicity has a strong meaning for her name. Do you know the meaning of your name? Do you know where you got your name from? All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow for chapters three and four.